Christopher Knowlton. I am a PhD student at UIC in biomedical engineering and I'm also a movement artist, choreographer, and dancer in Chicago. I, so I attended a kind of different not a normal high school. I went to the Illinois Mathematics and Science Academy, which is a state-run high school in Aurora, Illinois. That it's um, so it's a public one, but you have to apply to get in, and then you end up you kind of live on campus. So in a way, it's a public boarding school. So it's not necessarily private, but it's not really. It's not like people in the neighborhood go to it. People from all over the state go to it. So that was really transformative um, to go there. Um, and even though it's called the Math and so Math and Science Academy, I had a lot of opportunities and a lot of um, really great other classes, you know, English and history, um, that really kind of transformed the way I think about the world. Um, I started dancing there, um, and then when I went to undergrad, like I said, I went as an engineer, and uh, then I eventually tried out for the, the dance program, and I got in, but I didn't want to switch, so they were kind of co-developing. Um, my interest in dance and my interest in science. And so that's why I think I got to a point where it's like, well, how can they be the same thing? How can I look at movement in a scientific way? Um, and how can I look at art in a scientific way as well? And how can I look at the science? How can um, I look at the science and understand it through what I already know by actually you know, being a mover and um, you know, moving my joints, using my joints. So we put the practice into theory and put the theory into practice. I came up to Chicago to start my graduate studies. I started as a master's in 2009 and then I switched into PhD in 2010. So I've been in the, this is hard to say, I've been studying bioengineering officially for five years. I personally work on uh, knee replacements at um, Rush Orthopedics. Um, and you get to go home thinking that you've helped someone's grandmother, you know, walk better, or someone who has been in a car accident, that you're able to restore their mobility and improve their quality of life, and possibly, you know, the length of their lifespan. There's bioengineering, um, and it encompasses a lot of the things you see in the news. Uh, stem cell research is part of bioengineering, um, tissue engineering, uh, you know, there's a 3D printing of a skull that was implanted on a woman, and um, there's just a whole host of really exciting developments and just really exciting treatments coming out of bioengineering um, that exactly, like I said, they are viewing the body through a scientific lens to really demystify some of these things and make really important advancements in um, treatment and healthcare. If you take the approach of being a little less purpose driven and a little, you know, a little less uh, goal oriented in creating health uh, health considerations, then you you can really find some rich material that's really that 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 resonates with people on an emotional level. Um, and then at the same time, bioengineering, because it is about healthcare, because it is about um, treating people and treating the body, and you know even like replacing limbs that people have lost. It's actually an extremely emotional field. Doctors are starting to make this shift and then as bioengineers and scientists bring in more technical aspects, sort of more technical uh, complex treatments, we have, the field is growing at a time where we have those ethics in mind and we have those considerations in mind, or at least we should. And so we need to realize that the person retreating is a person that is in the machine, even though we're engineers, um, and we're solving these things in that sort of mechanized way, that it is a person. A lot of knee replacements are uh, plastic and metal right now, so that when they articulate, it, they are, it's a plastic versus a metal. 
And there were some designs back in the day that were metal versus metal um, because those function fairly well in the human body, but, and they like in a laboratory function better than plastic on metal, but in a human, when you put them in a human knee, they actually squeak. <laughs> And so it's, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's a funny consideration, but you have to, re you know, we have to realize this is going in a person. It's not a machine that's in a corner doing something. This is a person who has to live a life and has to be social. And they, like, you can't have a knee that sounds like the bionic man because that's not how you be a person. You know, these people want to lead normal lives and improve their quality of life. So even though a, what we call metal on metal knee replacement may have had better outcomes, it won't be adopted. Really, you have to look at it as an opportunity when, you, um, when you're limited. You have to look at that as an opportunity to think differently and do things different. I've really been interested in, in learning to become an advocate um, for differently abled people. Um, you know, partially my work with prosthetics um, has exposed me to sort of how um, we're giving differently able people tools to sort of adapt their ability to the world we created. But I think I think it's very important that the world start adapting for these differently able people too. That we're not always putting the burden of responsibility on these um, people who are differently able because you know you know if there's not a ramp at the you know door like why should why should that be their problem? The ones I'm currently involved in, like as of this moment, I'm workshopping with Synapse Arts, um, which is a dance collective. They're in their 10th season. Um, we're workshopping for uh, work that we're putting in the uh, DK storefront theater uh, downtown in the Loop. I'm currently workshopping with About Face Theater, which is one of the um, one of the primary uh, LGBTQA um, th uh, theater troops um, based in Lakeview. Um, so I'm working with Eric Hof as director and um, Aaron Kilmer as choreographer um, on a new piece about a uh, a trans soldier in the Civil War. Um, that's been really awesome. I don't often get to work with theater groups, and they're just. <laughs> group of insanely talented people. They're so, they're so insanely talented. Um, I'm also working with uh, a yogi and dancer, uh, Salvita Diaz-Brown. She is um, beginning to fuse her contemporary dance training with her yoga training, and we're uh, developing a dance acro yoga um, piece that we're touring to India in November and then we're touring to Mexico and we, we, turned to Me we toured to Mexico last year. Um, I uh, have been touring with a group called Adam R, which is Anatomical Theaters of Mixed Reality. We just uh, completed a work that include a lot of um, digital layering. Um, we had uh, tattoos that you could scan with a smart device uh, and would bring up digital content on a layer and you could view the piece sort of through your device with extra information while things are happening and uh, also include a lot of digital poems and interactive table, um, a sort of a durational performance art piece um, that we, so we toured that um, to the UK and we toured that to New York and the Bay Area recently. Um, so that's been wonderful. That's been a really wonderful experience. Um, and we, we also had it in Chicago. Um, I, <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I work with Eric Mott, who's um, a movement artist, performance maker. Um, she works a lot with object manipulation, a lot of uh, uh, sort of political histories of the marginalized. We did a piece called Cowboys and Vikings, was sort of the project name um, that really explored territorialism, um, masculinity um, through these sort of Art, heroic arch archetypes of the cowboy and the Viking in American culture and Icelandic culture um, and how they've influenced um, the current economies especially in the economic collapse of uh, 2009. I created um, a video called Dance Your PhD. It's an online international video contest that's hosted by Science Magazine. Uh, one of its correspondents started it. Um, so I participated. I made a short dance film 
that um, explained my thesis. That's the whole um, purpose of this contest. <laughs> finalist uh, so I was in science magazine which is like a really exciting thing for me um, and I that film got shown at a dance and science festival in um, Australia it's been shown kind of throughout Chicago um, uh, and it was on like I said on science magazine and um, that was really exciting it was super fun um, then I got invited to do the uh, TED talks in Chicago um, so they invited me uh, to create a a live performance um, for the TED Talks, and so for that, instead of explaining my th my thesis, I um, I took the ten talks that were happening throughout the day, and I sort of connected and summarized them, and so we had ten talks in ten minutes through dance, and um, we made this choreography that sort of wrapped up the conference. Just like drawing, dance is a powerful communicative tool. We can condense color code, organize, synchronize in dynamic ways. So those are some of the major projects I've been on, just some of them, mind you. Uh, <laughs> I also just, I freelance throughout the city um, as a movement artist. Um, I. Um, also create a lot of my, I create solo work, um, one that I just premiered at um, Hamlin Park Theater that's going to be, it was chosen to be restaged, um, so that's exciting. Um, and then Queer All and OK was, uh, that was one of the really great things. And that, that um, performance, the Queer All and OK performance came out of a performance I had done at Salonathon, which Salonathon, probably Joe mentioned this, is a um, um, weekly every Monday evening at Beauty Bar is a sort of performance salon where we try to, you know, underground emerging and genre-defying performances that are less than five minutes long. <laughs> um, so the My Career and OK performance came out of a lot of the storytelling that I was experimenting with at Salonathon, um, and I developed it a little further for Queer O and OK. Yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> um, I've just done a lot. I've done a lot, and all the while, I'm still working on my PhD, so um, that's my life. <laughs>